So all this talk about mitochondria, but where do all our health problems come from? Between the daily challenges of work, family, and um, for example, taking care of ourselves, you feel your energy is decreasing, but you don't know how to stop it. Even worse, after years of frenetically rushing from one place to another, meeting deadlines, eating uh, junk food along the way, collapsing into the bed each night without any time to exercise, your lifestyle seems pretty normal. But you think to yourself and you worry, if I keep up with this pace, if I keep up with this pace, I will get sick. I will get really, really sick. And the worst part, you are right. Struggling through life, exhausted and burnout is a perfect recipe for getting an illness. And what lies behind? Our mitochondria don't function properly and they're making less ATP. Chronic stress may decrease energy production in mitochondria and may alter their morphology. Acute stress can damage mitochondria within seconds, as we mentioned uh, with cyanide. And our body must continuously make ATP or we are going to die. But we store only for 8 to 10 heartbeats. And that's not a lot. Actually, back in the 1940s and 1950s, mitochondrial theory of aging was born. And the idea was is that during metabolism, during energy production in, in the mitochondria, there is a lot of free radicals. And when produced excessively, those free radicals can damage our macromolecules. They can damage our lipids, our proteins, our DNA. Uh, they can damage almost all biological structures. If we could slow down this damage to our macromolecules, we will be able to delay aging. We will be able to, uh, to, um, to stay healthy and uh, not to get disease in the, in the, in the, uh, in, to, to sum it up. And what is actually a free radical that is produced in mitochondria? The, the, free, radicals, uh, the free radicals are just uh, uh, molecules that have uh, one or more unpaired electrons in their outer orbits. The most well-known and the well-researched molecule, uh, free radical molecule, is oxygen. So here we have oxygen. So normally oxygen... Uh, has these uh, four pairs of electrons here, but in a free radical situation, it might lose one electron and this guy here we call a free radical. So we have just one electron here. Free radicals are, um, are generated in, in different cellular compartments, but the vast majority, around 90% of the free radicals, is generated in mitochondria. Uh, they can be generated uh, through different mechanisms, and the most of the free radicals is generated during uh, energy production, during oxidative phosphorylation. What is happening there? So we have cytochrome, uh, cytochrome C or the complex 4 in the electron transport chain. And this protein complex transfers electrons to oxygen and oxygen gladly accepts those electrons. So uh, for the oxygen to be happy, it needs full four electrons to make a water. But what is happening if it doesn't receive all four? Well, that's my friends when we get free radicals. So here we have molecular oxygen. If it grabs one electron, it will become a super oxide anion. If he grabs two, it's going to become hydrogen peroxide. If he grabs three, 
is going to become a hydroxyl free radical. And if he grabs, if it grabs all four, it becomes water. So one, two, and three electrons is called partial reduction of oxygen since oxygen isn't being re reduced all the way to water. Another way where we can generate free radicals is through uh, contact with metals. And when we are talking about metals, we are talking about metals in the context of the body, so the copper and iron. Uh, they are usually bound to, iron is bounded to transferrin and the copper to ceruloplasmin, and we really want to make sure they are bounded. Why? Because if they are not bounded and they are free, they will, let's go backwards from here, they will make hydroxyl free radical through this uh, reaction with, uh, with uh, iron ions that is called phantom reaction. So we re really uh, want to make sure that iron and copper are, are bounded in our blood. Another way where we can jet, uh, get free radicals is through, um, is through inflammation. So when our immune system is attacking, uh, for example, viruses or bacteria, they want uh, our immune system just wants to kill them. And um, uh, our immune system doing that by producing a large amount of free radicals. Acute inflammation is very um, necessary for us to survive, but chronic inflammation can cause very, uh, very big problems because we have a constantly producing a lot of the free radicals, which can damage our macromolecules. Then we have, um, we can generate free radicals through ionizing radiation. So when ionizing radiation sort, sorts of come in in the cell and hits the water, it can knock off one electron and we will end up with the hydroxyl free radical, the most damaging one and the most, um, uh, most dangerous one. Also, we can generate free radicals um, uh, by uh, taking some drugs. For example, paracetamol, when taken, uh, is going to liver to be metabolized and the uh, cytochrome P450 P system is taking care of that in the liver. But this metabolizing can cause the free radicals. And that is why when high doses of uh, paracetamol are taken, for example, three, four, five grams per day, that can cause massive death of liver tissue. And that is mostly from free radical production. Also, pollu pollutants produced from modern technologies can cause uh, free radicals production. Also, processed food that we are eating is full of uh, lipid peroxides, it's full of pesticides, first fertilizers, and those substances, when ingested, can uh, cause uh, production of free radicals as well. Uh, cigarette smoke, as well, is making um, uh, a, a lot of free radicals. So all this talk about free radicals, but how do they actually damage the cell? Uh, through uh, lipid peroxidation is one uh, big, um, uh, big problem uh, which is happening when free radical is attacking lipids, uh, mostly in the cell membrane. So you remember that free radical has one unpaired electron and it just wants another electron to be its pair. So basically, this free radical can take off an electron from the lipid in the membrane. This free radical is now satisfied. It doesn't have unpaired electron, everything is fine. But this lipid here is left with one unpaired electron as well. So this lipid will take another electron from another lipid and this one from the third one, and we will eventually have something like a chain reaction, which will eventually disrupt the cell membrane. And we know if the cell membrane is damaged, the cell will die. Also, free radicals can oxidize proteins in our body, and this can obviously hurt the cell depending on the protein function. But the most dangerous thing is when uh, free radicals are oxidizing our DNA. 
when uh, free radicals are attacking our DNA, they can introduce mutations, and those mutations are responsible for getting high risk of uh, of getting the the cancer. So we really want to make sure that uh, uh, we don't have excessive amount of free radicals to attack our DNA. Maybe that DNA damage will not be noticed in your life, but if you pass that damaged DNA to their offspring, probably your children or your grandchildren will get a cancer in some moment. Uh, because our bodies are so smart, it, it is quite reasonable and uh, totally true that we have our defense system against uh, those uh, bad guys, against free radicals. So the first defense systems are antioxidants. Those are vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E. They are present in our cells. Antioxidants are, um, uh, are uh, their chemical structure allows them to donate electron to the free radical. But we have to have in mind uh, uh, another, uh, another uh, fact about antioxidants. For example, if vitamin C donates one electron to the free radical and neutralize that free radical, I get that vitamin C will be left with one unpaired electron and eventually can start to act as a free radical as well. So we want to make sure that antioxidants such as vitamin A, C and E are, um, are combined with, um, uh, for example, bioflavonoids whose chemical structure allows them to donate not one but two electrons which are pair and they will not start to act as, a, as a free radicals. Uh, other defense systems are metal carriers, mainly transferring that carry iron and ceruloplasmin that uh, carries copper. We want to make sure that we have enough of these proteins in our blood and we want to make sure the levels of iron and copper in our blood. And the third very important players in this free radical game are the enzymes. We have three enzymes. Superoxide dismutase will take care of superoxide anion, catalase will take care of hydrogen peroxide, and glutathione peroxidase will take care of hydroxyl free radical.